Should you prefer a paramotor with a clutch? And the answer is yes. It's quite a very simple and straightforward answer, while the reasoning is a bit tricky. Welcome to part 30 of the insights into paramotor geometry. Last time I promised to discuss the weight of the paramotors, but I decided to rearrange the order of the videos and we will discuss that one later because this one just fits better into the queue. I started to fly paramotors without the clutch, then I switched to engines with clutch back and ended up flying a clutched engine again. Yes, my personal opinion is that engines with the clutch are better, but the reasoning is a little bit difficult. So let's go and analyze the pros and cons one by after another. Obviously, the clutch will add weight. In this case, engines without clutch are definitely lighter. Now the question is, it is worth to carry the extra half kilogram of clutch on your back. Reliability for sure, whatever is not installed on your paramotor will not break. So in this respect, engines without clutch are more reliable. On the other hand, there are not so many issues known to, be, to happen with clutches. For sure, engines with clutch are easier to start, and the reason is simple. You don't waste your energy accelerating the propeller itself. All your energy that you pull the cord is applied to the engine itself. We have measured this when we have designed uh, the Safe Start computer, and we, we've noticed that during the starting period, during pulling the cord, on engines without clutch, you roughly reach around 1000, 1200 RPM on the engine, while with paramotors with, with clutch, you actually reach 2500. Uh, so the engines with clutch are happier to start on a first or second pull. Not having the clutch on your prop gives you the opportunity to start the engine by the propeller in case your starter is broken. Honestly, I don't think this is an, any advantage. If your starter is broken, stay on the ground. Don't touch the prop with your hand. I have noticed that the engine with clutch runs a lot smoother on, uh, on idle. And there is a very simple reason. On the Viterazzi Monster Plus, the manufacturer recommends 2000 to 2200 RPM on idle. I, on the other hand, prefer slightly higher, maybe 2300 to 2400 for idle, idle spinning. And the reason is that with higher idle RPM, the engine runs a little bit smoother, has less vibration. Uh, the rubber mounts uh, suffer way less and there is less stress on the exhaust itself. Now with engines without clutch, you can't really have this high RPM on idle because the engine would actually push you. Okay, the major concern of people choosing an engine either with clutch or without is the safety. There is definitely a benefit of the prop not spinning on your back when you're preparing for takeoff, when you're uh, hooking in the glider and checking your lines and doing the final, final check and run. Uh, so that's definitely an advantage for clutched engines. Uh, the clutched engines have a slight disadvantage that is right before landing or after landing when you kill the engine, the prop keeps on spinning. So there's a higher risk of, you, of your lines getting tangled into the prop. So this is sort of tricky to choose either the benefit for takeoff 
and the disadvantage on landing or the other way. So, and I myself switching between clutched and non-clutched engines, I couldn't really make the final rational conclusion, but I sort of felt that, uh, that the clutched engine is better, that the, that the clutch on my back gives me some sort of, uh, sort of feel, some, some better feel. Uh, and uh, yeah, and that's the point. This is what I've noticed. Having the clutch on your back, having the prop not spinning before takeoff makes you more calm, makes you feel more easy during takeoff, makes you feel less stress and less push for takeoff. And that's the crucial, that's the very crucial thing. So I have noticed our students have better results when take, well, taking off with a clutched engine because they just keep calm and take off. So guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next chapter that I will shortly discuss the benefits and disadvantages of having an electric starter. Stay tuned, hit the subscribe button and see you soon.